Hello, and welcome to part two of my Intro to Niagara tutorial video series. So this video is directly following up on the first video that I made about uh, the introduction to concepts in Niagara and also creating a very basic water drop particle system, which you can see here going on right here, dropping off the surface. Um, we're actually going to be building on that system, and I'm going to be using all of the concepts that I explained in the previous video. Um, I'm not going to be re-explaining them. I'm going to be explaining new concepts. Uh, if you did not watch the previous video and you don't know anything about Niagara, I highly recommend you watch that video first. It's a little bit long, but you can watch it on two times speed and knock it out in half an hour, um, and you'll know all the basics of Niagara. And then we'll move on to these slightly more advanced concepts. Uh, if you just want to know about these concepts, uh, in this, this video we're going to be focusing on events and how to communicate between particle emitters uh, to create a more dynamic effect than just this water dropping through the floor here. And we're also going to be creating uh, a link between a blueprint and the particle system so that the blueprint can inform what the particle system is doing to create a better effect that's more versatile. So we're just going to start off with all the things that we already had. We have a, you know, a particle system. We have our water drop particle emitter. We're going to create a new particle emitter um, for our splashes. So we right click and go to FX Niagara emitter. Uh, and you might ask why we're not just using the water drops because they're you know pretty they, they have the the water drops and their look already done um but really these this fountain effect is what we're going for with our splashes this very like off the bat does a lot of the things that we want to do so we're going to start with this um and just modify it for our purposes so we're going to start it um we're going to name it Particle emitter Naya, Niagara. I always do that. <laughs> Water splash. Uh, so now we have this. We're going to open it. And you can see they both look the same. So actually, before we even dive into this one, what I'm going to do is go here and click thumbnail. And so what that's going to do is generate an image for that one. And we're going to save it. And you can come back and you can see that has a really bad image on it. But at least it's a different image. So we can see that these two are different just from a glance. So we're going to open up Water Splash now. Uh, we're going to delete a couple of different modules that we absolutely do not need. Uh, we want to delete that size by mass. Uh, we want to delete the sphere location because we want them all to spawn from a central location, which will be where the drop hit. Uh, so we also want to move the color up here. Um, this time we're going to keep the gravity and the drag force because those are going to just be useful for what we're doing here. And the color, we want to change this to a constant again by resetting it. We're going to change the color to 0 on red, 1 on green, and 0.97 on blue to match our previous system. Also, what we're going to want to do here is change this to the water drops material that we made last time so it looks the same. So you can see, at least color-wise, it looks like it's supposed to. Uh, we're going to go in... And we are going to delete the spawn rate. Uh, we don't want it to constantly spawn drops, especially not this many. Uh, what we want to do is we want to have a burst, and that is going to be when one particle hits the ground, we're going to burst out uh, a bunch of little particles. So we're going to go uh, spawn burst instantaneous. And this is just, honestly, this is not how we're going to have this later uh, we're just doing this for um, you know debugging and seeing what we're actually doing for this part oh I should not have done that I put it in spawn time what I wanted to do is go to spawn count and go to uh, ranged int so then we're gonna go three to five is what I was trying to do okay so now we have that um, and we want to change the emitter duration uh, actually, you know, I don't, I don't think that's going to be, since we're just, um, since we're just doing this to debug, I don't think it's super necessary to change that. I mean, it could be nice to just have this spawn a lot more often. Uh, you know what? I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I talked myself into it. Okay. So now you can see it, it spawns more often so that we can see what it's happening. You know, it's not like five seconds in between every time it does it so that we can actually see what's going on. 
So then we want to get rid of the rotation. We're actually going to handle that through um, aligning the particles to velocity later. Um, we're going to add uh, sprite size again. And as we did last time, we're going to do that from a, a vector 2D so that we only need one number. Uh, and we're going to once again do something that's ranged. Um, we're going to make these a little bit I'm just trying to type in uniform and range at the same time. <laughs> We're going to do something that is a little bit, uh, a little smaller. Two to three is ever so slightly smaller than what we had before. Um, you might want it to be a lot smaller, but once we do the, the velocity aligned, it even looks smaller. Um, so it just needs to kind of give the effect, the visual effect, that the, the mass of the water drop is transferring to the splash. Um, so it just needs to be smaller. Um, we're going to change the velocity and uh, we want to start off negative 120, negative 120, and 300 on our minimum, negative one, or, or 120, 120, and 400 on our maximum. So basically what that's doing, and you can see it here, is it's giving us some spread and it's giving us a nice little upward splash to transfer that, that movement from the drop coming down to the water going up. Okay, so after adding the velocity in, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to particle update here and add a sprite size scale. And you might ask why we've done it that way as opposed to just uh, changing it in here um, in the, the sprite size. Uh, and why I'm doing it this way is because I want the X and the Y to share a value that is the same in that uh, random range as opposed to making a vector that has two endpoints there and having those both be able to be random within that range. Um, I want them to be the same to start off with and then I want to change the the length. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them squash down on X and on Y they're going to be the normal length. That way it looks like they're going to be stretched in a direction of movement. And the way that we're going to accomplish that is by going down here and doing alignment velocity align. So, so without velocity aligned, if we unclick this to unaligned, you can see that they're just straight up and down the whole time. It doesn't look very interesting. If you go to velocity aligned, then suddenly you can see that that long tail of it is actually faced in the direction of the velocity. So that gives us a little bit more implied motion in this, which looks a little bit better. Uh, so then after that, uh, we're going to go ahead and add a kill volume to our particle update. So you can see now they're coming, the particles are spawning out of the floor and then falling through the floor. You don't want to do that. You want them to just spawn out of the floor and die as soon as they hit the floor. So what we're going to do here is go to add module, uh, kill particles and volume. So you can see it starts off with a sphere. Uh, what we want to do is a plane. So you click plane um, and it needs to update. I don't know why that took so long. Um, but then it's going to ask you for the plane normal. So basically the, the um, axis perpendicular to the plane, which is going to be the z-axis, which is the direction that the water drops are falling uh, and that should be fine. So we just have a plane that is at base level. It's You can see it's not offset at all. It's at base level and the particles spawn there, come out, hit it and die. And then that should be good enough for this for now. Um, I think we have changed everything that we want to change in here. Um, for the time being. You see we just have this very simple splash effect um, and we're going to now work on integrating that into the water drops effect. So the first thing that we're, very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in here into the water drops effect and we are also going to add a, a kill floor into this. So we're going to add a kill particles and volume. We're going to change that to plane and then that's that. It's It's just there. Now if we watch you can see to start off with, and we're going to change this so we can debug this a little bit better. You can see that the the plane is starting off where the particles are. So as soon as they start to fall, they die because they're falling immediately through that kill volume. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to box location and we're just going to change the offset for the time being to be 300 so that 
zoom out a little bit, you can see they start above the floor and they fall into it and immediately die. So now that we've done that, we want to go into particle update and also we want to add an event, which is a generate death event. So we're gonna add this. Uh, this is gonna be just below everything. We want, it, we want it to be below velocity because we want it to know the last location of the particle. Um, now, looking at this generate death event, you can see it sends a bunch of variables to the receiver, uh, which is going to be our other particle event, our other particle emitter. And there are a couple different things in here. There's event condition, whether to send the death event. You just want to leave this checked. This is basically saying, do you want to send an event when they die? Yes, you do. Um, and this gap correction amount is is a, another concept that we should dive into here before we get any further, which is basically that these events happen on the like next frame. Like they're not they're not in the same cycle as everything that's going on. So like basically the event happens and the other particle is not gonna uh, other particle emitter is not gonna know about it until at least a frame later. It there's some delta time associated with that. So this gap correction amount is basically saying uh how much how many frames do you want to advance the simulation so that there is no gap in your particle system. Um, and I'm gonna show you in a minute this is actually, if we leave it at this, this is going to create issues for us because we don't want it to advance because basically it's going to advance the simulation past the kill floor if we do this. So we're going to save this here. We're going to go into the water splash and we're going to delete the burst because we don't need that anymore. Uh, we're going to add an event handler. Um, we cannot tell it what we want that to be yet because uh, it's not in a system with anything that's generating an event. So right now all we're going to do is change to uh, spawn particles. Uh, we're going to change the spawn number to th three, I think, no, five. We're going to change it to five and then we're going to click random spawn number and then it's going to give us the ability to put a minimum. So we're going to put that as three. So now um, every time uh, this emitter receives a death event from another particle system or receives an event, we haven't set it to a death event yet, but every time it receives an event, it's going to spawn particles, um, minimum of three, maximum of five, and it's going to use the stuff that we have up here. Uh, so this kind of ruins the flow of the stack a little bit. It's a little weird. Um, it's difficult to visualize what's going on behind the scenes here. But essentially, I think it's receiving this stuff, and then on the next frame, it's telling it, here's what you do. Um, you can also put things below here. So Things that you put below here are also going to be added to the particle system. So you could, for instance, tell it where you want to spawn the particles here. Like you could add the box location here to tell it where you want them. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're just spawning them at the origin. But the thing we do want to do is we want to go up here, add event, uh, receive death event. So the other thing that this is going to do is um, once it gets a death event in particular, it's going to use the payload or the, the variables that that event is sending, and it's going to write those to these particles that are being spawned. So right now it's just writing everything. Um, one thing that we'll notice is that it inherits a velocity scale, which um, a velocity, which is maybe not what we want. But we're just gonna we're just gonna take this for now, and we're gonna go and add. Um, we're going to add. Is this screwing up? Yeah. So this is one of those. As I mentioned in the last video, sometimes things don't update, and so we can click on water drops here and go down to the kill floor. Kill floor exists. It's where it's supposed to be. The box location is not. Um, and you can see no matter what I do here, it does not want to add that offset. Uh, maybe if I save this. Yeah, I did it there. Okay. So that time it was because I didn't save. Sometimes it just doesn't do it. So just, just be mindful of that. But anyway, so now we're in the particle system. We want to add the water splash emitter. So now we have the water splash emitter. It's here. It's not doing anything because it's not receiving any events. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the event handler and click on source, and we want to go to PEN water drops death event. So now when it receives a death event, it's spawning particles with this uh, in this in this number range, and then also writing the attributes that it's getting those particles. And you can see right off the bat something's wrong. So um, you know we can we can go in here and we can tinker with this inherited velocity scale. And if we say negative one, for instance, save that, come back over here. Uh, Oh, that didn't do anything. Well, in in previous times doing this, I've had it where I changed that and it started shooting things up super fast because essentially what it's doing is it's taking the velocity from these falling particles and giving them to the splash particles, which we don't want because it's going down super fast. What we want is the, the velocities that we added to it here. So essentially what we're going to do is make sure this checked and go to zero so that they are not taking that velocity right so that they don't either spawn below the the kill floor or you know just do whatever you know they they might have just been crashing into the kill floor but you notice we change that it's still not working so the other thing which i mentioned earlier and we're going to go back to now is this gap correction amount basically what it's doing is um if i if I go into, I think it's the receive. So if I go in here and I right click on it and go to open and focus asset. Uh, actually, it might be in the generate. Yeah, it's in the generate. So um, if we go to generate death event here, I'm going to open and focus asset. There's this whole section in here where the module is essentially taking uh, the gap correction amount and taking all the location and velocity information and advancing the particle forward uh, so it's sending a location to the receiver in here that is advanced forward and essentially what that's doing is it's pushing the particles down below our kill floor and we do not want that so we're going to change this gap correction to zero so it should not be updating that um, that position so now you can see we're dropping down and occasionally it will spawn particles and i think there's still an issue here with the velocities of these particles and sometimes the position that it's sending being a little bit below the kill floor um so you know probably the easiest way to do this uh is to just add a box location to the uh the water splash so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to particle spawn and the water splash. We're going to go to box location. Uh, we're going to change all these to zero because we want them to be just completely zeroed out. It's not, not useful for us. Uh, we want them to spawn from a single location. But we're going to add an offset to the Z so that they're spawning higher. The splashes are spawning higher than the particles that died. Um, and I think 10 is probably good. We'll look at this and see what what it looks like um, but you just want to give it some offset so it's not dying immediately and you can see we're maybe still having an issue with that let's watch it a couple times and just see if any of them just disappear uh, it looks like uh, some of them are yeah we might change that um, 15 maybe you just don't want to go too high so that it's noticeable that the particles are spawning much higher than um, much higher than where the drop hit and it's not really noticeable here you can see that the the particles are just kind of hitting and the velocity of the the water splash is coming up is so much that you don't really notice that the particles are being spawned higher but now you can see um, we've got the the drops hitting and the splashes are coming out. We might actually change the size of the splashes. I just kind of fudged the scale here. Um, I like 0 0.75 and 1.5. Um, and we'll save that and we'll take another look at it and see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So now you can actually see the splashes. Uh, they, they look like it's the approximate amount that came out of the drop. If you really, really wanted to be detailed with this, you could actually drive a whole bunch of behavior in the splashes 
where it's receiving the size of the drop particles from the death event and then telling it how many and what size of particles to spawn and splash based on that. We're not going to do that. I think this looks pretty good the way it stands. Again, I'm still seeing some things falling through the floor there. And that's kind of, you just kind of have to play with that a bunch. Let me see if I, what I had before in terms of numbers that I put around. Um, uh, the other thing that might be happening there, and I, I totally forgot to mention this, is that in the event handler you can set the max events per frame. So we'll just go with 10 and see if that has any effect on whether or not we're seeing some happen or not. Nope. <laughs> That's just not not looking great. So we're going to add a little bit more to the box offset. See if that helps us out. There we go. We're not losing nearly as many. Ugh, we're still losing some. I think I think it's fine the way it is. Um, not every little drop would create a huge splash. Uh, you can tinker with that number a little bit more if you want to, but I, I think, you know, unless you're really hardcore paying attention to it, you're not really going to notice how many of them are not splashing. Um, so the next thing we want to do now that we've got our our blueprint, our our emitters talking to each other, is to get the blueprint to talk to the particle system. So, you know, we've got this death event that is telling uh, this other particle system when to go, but, you know, if we if we look at this in the world... Now, oh, I've got this all screwed up. You see, this is not very, like, variable. We can't really just set this wherever we want. It's not versatile, I guess, is what I was, was getting at. Like, the, the particles up here are always spawning in one spot. The kill floor is always in another spot. So you can't really you can't really just put that wherever you want to go. So what we're going to go do first is go back to water drops. And we're going to set this offset back to zero. And it's going to look broken at first. But there's a reason for that. Uh, we're also going to go to this parameter tab. And we're going to click plus next to user. And we want to make a vector. And we're going to call this user kill oh caps lock is on for some reason kill floor offset so now we've got that and now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our kill particles and volume and go to origin offset and click this little arrow and go to link inputs other i think oh boy that didn't show up sometimes this this is a little finicky with how it you know, whether or not it wants to show you something that you just made. Um, okay, so I, I remembered now how to make this work because it is very specific. Uh, you cannot just create something and then tell it to use that over here. What you have to do is you have to create it and then you drag it and you drop it on the thing that you want. And now it exists here to be used. So now I could go in here and go to user exposed, exposed and select it from there. But so that is the, the quirk. It's a very strange quirk. And I think it has something to do with, you can see this number here. I believe this number here refers to how many times this variable is used or referred to. And so if it's zero, it's not really being pulled into memory yet or something. So it's not accessible it's not a thing that is there yet so you can't use it but now you know see i i did it again on the normal and you can see it's got two now so i think i think it's just if it's got zero next to it you can't access it in or, or link to it in one of these modules uh without just dragging and dropping it it's, it's a little weird quirk but we got there <laughs> And now, now you know one of the gotchas is that you have to drag and drop. So remember, you have to drag and drop for the first time. So that is in there. We now have user kill floor offset. We save it. And the really cool thing is now that we've saved it, it is now accessible in uh, the, the system that it's in. So it's just something that you can use now. So now we can go to water splash. And we can go to our kill floor, and you see we still have the origin at zero, zero, zero. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop that also there. So now we have it in both of these. So they both have the same kill floor 
for particles. You can see the water drops are just growing, dropping immediately, hitting it, and then splashing out, which is a little weird, but we're gonna we're gonna fix that in a second. Just trust. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to the content browser. We're gonna right click blueprint class actor. We're gonna go BP water drops. I know we're naming these all the same things. That's why it's probably not the best way to name things, but that's why I put the, the tag on the front so you know the difference. Um, you could probably come up with a much better naming scheme than I can. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to open that. Um, we're going to come over here and we're going to add component. You have to type in Niagara particle system just gets you cascade. Uh, we're going to get the water drop system. We're going to call it that. We're going to go over here and the only one we have is water drop. So we're going to uh, select and add that. So now you can see we have our particle system in here. Uh, it's just at the origin. It's just doing the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable and we're going to name this uh, kill floor offset and we're going to make that a vec3. So now we have our kill floor offset. Uh, what we want to do is instance editable show 3D widget expose and spawn. So now we can edit these things in a, a really simple way and I'll show you that in a second. But first what we want to do is we want to um, take this Niagara system up oh, not in the construction script we could do it in the construction script I like doing it on begin play just less less weird things happen that way um, we're gonna take this Niagara system and we're gonna go set um, set vector not set Niagara uh, sorry set Niagara variable vector 3 that's what I was trying to say um, and we're gonna plug that in here at begin play uh, what we want to call this is user kill floor offset. So it has to be the same name, user kill floor offset. Um, and then we're going to take our variable here, our user kill floor offset variable that we made, and we're going to plug that in here. So this value is being set as whatever this kill floor offset is, which starts off at zero, as you can see. But, <clears throat> sorry, if we compile and save, and we're going to get rid of this loose particle system we have. And we're going to drop uh, our newly made blueprint actor into the world. Um, so we want to get this kind of centered. There we go. So you can see it's got this little 3D widget right here. And you can click on that. And then you can transform that widget. So you can then drop this all the way down to the floor. So it's halfway in the floor. Now... I have done something terribly wrong. <laughs> All right, so I just had a, a brain fart and I figured out exactly what I was doing wrong, which was that I hadn't done anything wrong. I just forgot that we're looking at this in editor, not simulating or playing. And I set up the, um, the variable being set on event play, which I even mentioned I was going to do. And I just kind of forgot. So again, that's a gotcha right there is that if you set it up on begin play as opposed to in the construction script or something, um, it's not going to look right until you actually play it. So here you go. <laughs> so now we have the particles spawning up there. We have the water drops spawning when the particles hit the kill floor. And you can see once again, I'm probably going to change this uh, spawn offset just because it's not, for whatever reason, it's not looking how we want it to. Um, so we're going to save that, save this, and see if that catches more of them. No, it's just not. That's interesting. Huh. Well, you can tinker with some more of that, but... It's 90% of the way there. Um, for whatever reason, when I did this before, it caught like all of the drops hitting the ground. Um, I haven't really done much different. So th there might be a number that's different somewhere that you could tinker with. But you, as you can see, like most of the drops hitting are, uh, maybe not even most, are, are spawning, uh, spawning splashes. Is this at the right number? It is. And are we getting the offset through here? We are. Huh. Well, that is kind of strange, but, uh, you know, like I said, the effect is mostly there. Um, 
So you can see spawning in there, splashing, and then we can click on this. And like I was doing before, we can change this offset so we can actually watch it do its magic. So you can see they hit the kill floor and they splash most of the time. <laughs> not really sure why it's not doing uh, all the time because the offset I've given it is it's pretty high. But, you know, that's a minor gripe with this. Um, I think, you know, we've got the effect most of the way where we want it. We've learned how to use events. We've learned some of the gotchas around events. Uh, and we've learned how to communicate with blueprints. And we've also had a few issues along the way that we were able to troubleshoot. Um, so I hope I've also given you a window into how you can fix some issues, <laughs> maybe not all of them, when they crop up, um, to give you a fairly nice effect. And I think, you know, we're... We're in a nice place with this one. We can we can see all of our, our labor, of our you know half hour of labor, if that. Um, and we have a, a fairly convincing effect, with the exception of those drops that miss. So uh, I, I hope you learned something here. I hope this gives you some ideas for how you can use Niagara to uh, make your own particle effects. And now that you know the basics, you can. Uh, you can take what you know and just go wild with it and get really deep into the intricacies of uh, Niagara and learn to do some cool stuff. I will be continuing to make videos. This is the you know encapsulated intro section of this, so this is just all the basics. I'm going to start making videos after this that are mainly focused on certain effects like making fire or making like a portal to another dimension or... Uh, taking a look at effects in games that look really cool and replicating them in Unreal Engine 4 and Niagara. So if you have any ideas that you think would be really cool to see and you want to know how to make, uh, just put them down in the comments and, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at them and see if there's something that I, I can figure out how to replicate. And if so, I can make a video on them. Um, if you have any trouble, just also ask a question, and I'll, I will try to answer your questions as best as I can. I can't promise that I have all the answers, obviously, because I, for whatever reason, can't make all these things splash um, in this particular iteration of the particle system. But, you know, I can try my best to, uh, to troubleshoot. Um, if you liked it, Please leave a like, uh, subscribe if you're interested in getting more videos like these and learning more about Niagara. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.